So that's a start with motion paths. There is one other thing I'd like to show you, and that is, and I'm going to go back to the beginning just quickly to demonstrate this and turn off position, and I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to go to Layer, New Solid, and I'm going to make it a slightly different colour, although it really doesn't matter what colour it is. Make sure it's comp size, click OK, and I'm going to take my ellipse tool. So if you haven't got your ellipse tool, it's the little drop down here and you get ellipse tool. Then I'm going to click and drag an ellipse right in the middle of my screen. Now that then, on this royal blue layer, gives me a mask. I can open up the mask and I can click on Mask Path. And when I click on Mask Path, I can copy the mask path. So you can go to Edit, Copy or Control or Command C. And then you can turn this layer off so you don't even see it. So turn the eyeball off and twirl it up. Then select your object layer, it's a car in this particular example, and then importantly select the position of the car or the position of the item and do an edit paste. So either edit paste or control or command V and notice that the car is following the path. I know it only goes on for two seconds but we can change its length in due course and you'll see that what I've done is I've pasted the mask shape into the position property and force the item to follow the shape of the mask. Now you can do this with all kinds of masks. You can even do it with Illustrator masks. Okay, so let's demonstrate this. I'm going over to Illustrator where I've already drawn a mask, effectively of the hills that we've been following before. This is actually a closed path with a fill that's greeny colour. And what I want to do is select it with my selection tool. So select the path and then I can go Edit Copy and then I'm going to go back over to After Effects. Now I'm going to create a new background layer that's going to be a different colour from the colour we've just seen in Illustrator. So I'm going to take my Motion Path Background, which is just the path without the car, and I'm going to create a new layer. So I'm going to go Layer New Solid, and we can keep the same colour as we had before, and I can click OK. And now I'm simply going to paste. Remember I've copied from Illustrator and I'm going to paste it on top of this new solid layer that I've got in After Effects. So I go Edit Paste and there it is. Notice that it's not brought the colour in from Illustrator, it's simply brought in the path. So if I actually select the layer I can drag that down and bring it to the appropriate point and use it if I wanted to. And if I open up the layer itself you see it will come in as a mask and I can open up that mask and I still have all the mask features including the fact that I can feather the edges to give me a softer edge and if necessary I can expand the mask to make it a little bit bigger if I want to or contract it. Just to show that I've got the controls that I would have had if I'd done it with a standard mask but I might have preferred to create that mask in Illustrator. One other example, let's go to Illustrator, let's create something a little bit different. Let's take the line segment tool, click and hold and about halfway down we've got the spiral tool, select the spiral tool and I'm just going to click anywhere here and I'm going to pull out a spiral. There's a bit of a spiral, don't need to move it around, that'll do just fine. And let go, go back to my selection tool, select my spiral path and go edit, copy. Now this time when I go back to After Effects, I'm going to open up my car composition. And I'm going to take it back to the beginning. In fact I'm going to control Z to undo this. There you go, take it back to the beginning and with my selection tool I'm going to select the position of the car and I'm going to paste in that spiral to the position of the car. So if I go edit, paste, you'll see that the car is now forced to follow the spiral. Now this is where these points get ridiculously far too big so I'm actually going to go back to my preferences, to my general preferences and I'm going to take them back down to 5 at the most and click OK you see all those points get a lot smaller. But now, you'll see that as I push the space bar, this car will now follow the spiral. Now, obviously, I don't want the car to follow the spiral. But it's just to demonstrate that paths can be brought across from Illustrator and from Photoshop to be able to paste into the position properties of the item that you have and move it around 
based on the path that you created because you may have created your assets in Illustrator and you may have created your assets in Photoshop and then actually drawing your paths or your masks over there and copying them across to After Effects might work a lot better for you. So there you go, we've got the car going down the plug hole for want of a better phrase. And of course if you were actually doing this what you probably would do is scale the car at the same time. So let's do that for fun. Select the car, S for scale, stopwatch at the beginning and at two seconds when it finishes we'll take that down to zero. Hit return and now when we play that back the car spins down the drain. Okay, now I'm going to undo a couple of these, so Control z a few times, take away my scale changes and take my path back to the beginning because I just want to show you how to change these paths one more time. But this time I want to show you how we can apply this in a slightly different way. Now I've brought in this JPEG, this card wipe JPEG, which I'm going to drag down to the new comp icon to create a composition that's the same size dimensions as the original and it'll be five seconds long because that's the length of my last composition. So it's five seconds long and it's this image. And what I want to do is I want to create a path for a flare, a lens flare to follow. Now I can draw the path with my pen tool. So if I take my pen tool and select my pen tool and I'm going to click outside and I'm going to click to this point and then I'm going to go down to this point, across to this point, up here, across, you get the idea, down and out. Now that's a path that I've drawn on top of this image that I'm going to use to actually move a lens flare through. So I'm going to go back to my arrow tool, my selection tool, and I'm going to select the layer and I'm going to go to effect, generate, lens flare, and drop that on my layer. Now the lens flare as you can see has got a center point here and we can move that around and see what it's like. We've got a few tools here for instance I can increase the brightness of it, make it that little bit more obvious but also I can use the path that I've created to change the place of this lens flare. How do I do that? Well I open up the layer, I open up my masks and I go to my mask 1 which is the mask I want to use and I select mask path and I copy that. So control or command C is the keyboard shortcut and now I'm going to close my masks and I'm going to open up my effects. Open up my effect and there's the lens flare, open up the lens flare and I'm going to choose the lens center and if I just click up here on lens center you can see where the lens center is, there's the lens center and here it is down on the timeline. I'm selecting that, make sure it's selected in my timeline and go edit paste which is control or command V and you can see at once animation has been created because you can see it in my timeline and when I press my spacebar to play this at two seconds you'll see that my lens flare follows along the path that I have created. I'll play you that one more time. Now it's an open path, it's not even a closed path. Of course you can do it with closed paths, but this is a way of highlighting something that's really important. You want a lens flare to go around, say, a piece of text that's really important. Create an ellipse, copy the ellipse mask path to the center of the lens flare, and the lens flare will start to rotate around the shape of the ellipse, which could be around the text or whatever you want to highlight. But notice, when you do this, it always comes in at a default two seconds long. Now, my composition is five seconds long, and I would really like this lens flare to go for five seconds to take up the whole of my composition. But also notice that the keyframes are different. The beginning keyframe and the end keyframe are standard linear keyframes, but the ones in the middle are these slightly less bright circles, and these are called roving keyframes. Now, if I click away to deselect all of them, and then I select the keyframe at the end, and I pull that across, you will see that these intermediate keyframes, the roving keyframes, will scale in the same proportion to how they were created. So the whole animation previously took two seconds and went keyframe to keyframe to keyframe. Now the same perspective between keyframes has been maintained. They've just all been stretched out because these are roving keyframes. So if I now take my current time indicator to the beginning and push the spacebar, you'll see that my animation takes the full five seconds to achieve what we want to achieve because of these roving keyframes. What you just need to do is make sure that you deselect them all and just take the end one and pull it across. Now you can do this with standard keyframes but it's a slightly different technique. So there you go, that's how you can create paths and you can use those paths, you can use them from Illustrator, from Photoshop and you can then paste them into the property that you want to change. In this case it's the flare center of the lens flare effect 
it could be the position of a layer, it could be the anchor point, whatever works for you. I hope you found these tutorials useful. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching. Thank you.